Counting down in three, two. <laughs> Come on now. We that good? was my alarm. It was time to get up. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Counting down in three, two, one. You're listening to another episode of Last Night's Coffee with Chuck and John. What's up, Night Shifters? We're back. It's episode 133. I thought 133 was last week. No, 132. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> feeling a little haggard. It's been a long weekend. Yep. I don't know about y'all, but I was at the race. I was at two different racetracks over the weekend, and uh, I'm whooped. You look like it a little bit, man. You look a little tired. You sound a little wore out. Were you, um, you know, got a little voice thing going on. Yeah, you went to a couple of racetracks this weekend, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So, um, started Thursday evening before work. I went and dropped Charlie off at Atlanta Motor Speedway so they could set up uh, their speed view um, display for the uh, for the fan zone. Mm-hmm. Then he spent all day Friday up there. I spent uh, Friday getting the race car lettered, mm-hmm. um, I think, is what I did. I don't yep. even know. And yeah, then, I'm pretty sure you sent me a message about it Friday. Saturday, I worked on that some more. Yep. And uh, then I had to go pick him up at the track, so I had to go get in all that traffic. Which it wasn't too bad Saturday, but still, I had to get in all that traffic, and then, oh man, what did I do? Oh, I so I got up there to the booth and ran into some friends of mine. So I had to stand around and talk for a little while because, <laughs> um, you know, that's what you got to do when you run into racing people. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Then we hopped it. We come home, loaded the car up, ran to Sonoma, unloaded the car, and ran one practice session how was your one practice session uh the motor's good the car is going to be good the power steering not so good what happened with the power steering we had a hose come apart and we don't really know why the hose decided to come apart Uh, Mm -hmm. we're going to get up there this afternoon and try to uh examine the situation yeah, that really sucks. He was only able to run one practice round. But how many laps did he put in? Uh, I think there were six laps. You know, it, okay. it wasn't hard laps. He was just out there breaking things in. Uh, sure. Just filling the car out. Avoided yep. one car spinning in front of him without power steering. So, Oh, geez. That, that was a, a feat in itself. I drew up. Uh <laughs> I said, I told him, I said, I don't know how hard you drew up when that happened, but I drew up hard. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) But the boys got some quick reaction times. So, yeah, um, he reacted to it and and we're good. So, uh, rather have this happen at a practice um, than than at a race. Sure. Sure. And our steering hose blowing is not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Uh, the guy beside me in the pits, beside us in the pits, he come in after the first session and they're over there working on their car and they loaded up and we loaded up. And I'm like, well, I'm going to ask him why they loaded up. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, car come in skipping, uh, took the valve cover off and we had a push rod missing. Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. So, so it ain't push rod. Gone, gone. And and he said, it's "What the do you same. do in that in that situation as a race car like owner driver? Like, what do you do? Do you just hope it's okay and keep running that motor?" Well, I talked to him about it a good bit, and he said that engine has done that before on the same cylinder. Mm. So, and, and I'm thinking that it's a, a casting issue with the head. Something in the geometry is off just enough to where it's not 
it's not working because you get that with uh <laughs> you'll get that with mass produced parts you know yeah every uh, you occasionally you will you, you get that and uh this is a he's running a crate motor so it's a sealed motor so you're not supposed to go in and work you, you can take the valve covers off chase valve springs and stuff but uh you're not really supposed to go any deeper than that i got you so um he's gonna he's gonna drop back and punt I guess this week you can see what he's got going on. He's got that going on. You know, dude, I, I watch, I come home and watched, uh, some sprint car racing on flow mm -hmm. after, after we got done and I watched a, a multi-million dollar sprint car. I'm assuming multi-million dollars is multi hundreds of thousands of dollars sprint car team. Yeah. You know, they made it to the feature and their car broke warming up so i mean it happens race cars are are funny things so yep and, mechanical and, and objects man mechanical objects and and you work on mechanical objects and i work on mechanical objects and you know how fickle they can be i do they're kind of like do. my stupid dog that won't quit barking even though i thought i put all the dogs <laughs> up and since juno is camouflaged with leaves uh i missed her Juno. She is out there laying in a pile of leaves. And I didn't even know she was there until she started making noise. You want to get her inside or you want to chill? Nah, she'll be all right. All right, cool. It's just another one of the cast of characters here on last night's coffee. <laughs> That's I'm right. Chuck, That's right. That's John. <laughs> and we're here. We, we are, are here. We're doing the show. We're doing the show. It's happening. With uh, Juno. This is the show with Juno. This is real life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the production value is what it is. Yep. We're, we're worried about our batteries dying and, <laughs> and, and everything else. I mean. We're 133 episodes in, though. I mean, that's a lot. 133 episodes in. You Come would on. think we would know how to do a podcast by now, but we don't. We don't. We don't have a clue. Every every show is like the first show we've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> you um, never know what you're going to get. You, you never know what you're going to get. We're still, we're amateur podcasters, if this is your first time watching. And yeah. uh, I don't even have a microphone today. Yeah, We'd rather be professionals. We'd rather be professionals. Y'all could help us out with that. Um, <laughs> but Let us know if we need to start a Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, get us, getting back to the epic weekend of racing that I had. That's right. That's right. Charlie had a he had a, a short showing in the in he the had practice. A short short showing in practice. He was bummed out. He took it harder than I did. Yeah, uh, he was tired though. But I got to go Sunday morning. We left. We got to the track about nine o'clock and went to the van, fan zone, and I got to watch him interact with people putting them on the uh, sim rig and just talking to kid other kids about race cars and and just being ambassadors in the sport him and uh krista steel i believe mm -hmm. is one of the other um speed use students that's really really great ambassadors in the sport they're 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 not afraid. Then both of them are shy. You know, if you try to talk to them, Krista's a lot like Charlie. I hope I'm getting her name right. Um, she's a lot like Charlie until you ask them a question about a car. Yeah. And I sit there and, you know, I watched, I, I, I don't know a lot of people. So I talked to her parents a good bit. Uh, mm -hmm. they're good, good folks. Um, We, I forgot where I was going with this. So we, I sat back and observed, you know, and I watched mm -hmm. this girl with her legends car. We didn't get to take our car up there for reasons, you know, just with yeah. practice and all. Uh, it wasn't logistically going to work out. Right. So um, we, I watched her um, doing, doing her thing, talking to kids. And, yeah. and letting kids sit in her race car, you know, to, 
to a kid getting to sit on in a race car on race weekend. She runs legends. Yeah. Man, that's, that's such a big deal. She oh, was absolutely. signing autographs for these kids. <laughs> she, she was, um, she was at one point there was a line of little girls lined up to take a picture with her. Oh man. By her race car. And I'm like, man, that's just so cool. That's gotta that's feel just, good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Charlie's got a say, and he goes, he goes, I want every kid to sit in my race car. Every kid. Because yeah. I used to be that little kid that wanted to sit in a race car. Yeah. Yeah. And I had people let me sit in their car. So I want to sit and I want every kid to sit in my race car. That's really cool, man. I love it. I love it. We we've been lucky. Uh, we've had friends that let them sit in the race car and, and build that mentality. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, you're drinking Pepsi. I, you got to no break. Ad, no free ads, John. No free. We got to break out the feuds here. What are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking coffee right now. Well, I've already had two cups of coffee, and I didn't think I needed to, eat, to drink a third before the show started. But well, you know Coke's better than Pepsi. No, no, it's not. What about your uh you got a you got a drink maker there? Yeah, but I had this left over from the race. Oh, I see. I see. I we're we're up. still drinking racetrack Pepsi. Yeah, I, yeah, I pulled it out, I pulled it out of the coolers where I was like, oh, I got one I ain't gotta make. <laughs> <laughs> we're um, still drinking racetrack Pepsi over here. <laughs> so but anyway, yesterday's so, Pepsi. Yesterday's Pepsi, last night's coffee, yeah. yesterday's Pepsi. Yeah, um, it wasn't flat, so hey, hey, hey. Uh, I got to meet Jeff Bodine, dude. <laughs> That's really freaking cool. When you sent me that picture, I was so stoked for you. Yeah, so I spent time uh, just wandering around the fan zone. Yeah, just like taking it in. I'm, I'm always in such a hurry when I get to the track because I'm either running late or I got general admission tickets and I got to get my spot. <laughs> right. Uh, so I go over there and I watch these guys juggling with fi fire, you know, they're fire jugglers. <laughs> they got stuff like that at the racetrack? Yes, dude. They had street performers <laughs> at the racetrack. And the, the show That's was awesome. hilarious. I cannot remember their show name. I would give them a <laughs> shout out, but it was just yeah. these two dudes that go around doing this kind of stuff. And a great show. They they brought in some crowd participation, crowd work. They did the crowd work thing. And so I come walking back, and I'm like, that looks like Jeff Bodine. And as I walk, and, and they're right there with our booth. Mm -hmm. And uh, his little display he's got, his little banner, blows over, and I pick it up, and he goes, thanks for catching me. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Okay. And then I walked <laughs> off and I was like, that's cool, man. And then I, I'm like, that's Jeff Bodine. <laughs> you started and to I, really realize it was him. Yeah, I'm like, I looked at uh <laughs> I looked at one of the other parents and said, Jeff Bodine is right there, right there. Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Jeff Bodine, right there. You know. And uh she's like, Yeah, he was here yesterday too. I'm like, he's here now. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the little kid in me is like, Jeff Bodine's here. Um, I was there when Jeff Bodine holds the track record at Atlanta for qualifying. Oh, how about that? I was there the day he set that track record. Oh, no way. Yes. Yeah. Me and dad were there, and it's the fastest lap I've ever seen. It's 197 point something miles an hour. They just had repaved the track. Uh, the cars were making 900 horsepower and it was blistering. I'm talking about it was something, it was something to behold. He went and, out there and looked down. Yeah. And the second fastest lap was put down by Ryan Newman a few years later. And I saw that lap too. Cause we all thought we we're looking around. It's like conditions are perfect. It's, it's, it's a light, light, humid day. Uh, the tracks, should be fast, you know. Yeah, it looked like it was going to happen, but it didn't. Uh, so the record still stands. Wow. So I go back over there. He's got so there's a country album that the racers put out in 1980s. 
It's got okay. Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, uh, <laughs> Bill Elliott, all on this album. So it, he was selling it for ten dollars. Tell me you bought it. I bought it for ten dollars and had him autograph it. Yes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Yeah. If you'll put the picture up right there, you'll see the the album he's holding, <laughs> and uh, you'll see. I he looked taller on TV. So <laughs> he's a bit of a small that. guy. Yeah. He, he he's a if I tower above somebody that they're not very tall. Yeah, he's I'm a bit of a small guy. Either. Well, so, I remember twenty years ago this guy was a legend in racing. Yeah, yeah. He's I a mean, big, he's kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting here watching people, and people are walking by. They don't even realize Jeff Bodine's over there. Like there was a, <laughs> there was a small crowd, probably about four four deep in the line. Yeah all day but nobody was really catching that he was there and i'm like y'all don't understand i wanted to go stand out there and go meet jeff bodine right here meet jeff bodine. i wanted to be you know the the guy working right here jeff bodine right here right okay there. but tell me how hardcore of a racing fan do you have to be to recognize jeff bodine by face um probably pretty hardcore I would say like no, no, no sponsorships, no race car number, no nothing. Just Jeff Bodine. I mean, he was kind of a, you know, he was there. He was, I want to say, let's see if I was going to compare him to a modern racer. He would fall into that. Uh, Denny Hamlin category yeah. where you can't, you couldn't stand him then. <laughs> but there's probably going to be a point where Denny Hamlin, like, there's Denny Hamlin right there. He's not racing yeah. anymore. Let's go talk to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, you look back fondly on him. You you, you had you, you have to have a yin to a yang. So if yeah. you're going to have a bad guy, you got to have, you know, you, it, it's just the way sports work out. Sure. You're going to have rivalries. The rivalry between him and Earnhardt was depicted in Days of Thunder through yeah. – um, through Cole Trickle and Rowdy. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it was a big deal back then. Um, he drove and it was a big deal to you this weekend. Yeah, dude, <laughs> so my friend Ray, that we've been racing, we've been involved with race cars together for, uh, you know, at the same time for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's He's friends with Chip and the guys at Speed U. So he, he shows up in the tent. And I'm like, Ray, dude, I got to meet Jeff Bodine. He goes, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, dude, I met Jeff Bodine. He goes, where? I said, right there. He is standing right there. He goes, no, he's not. And he turns around and he goes, Jeff Bodine's right there. I, said, I told you, Jeff Bodine is right there, dude. So we met Jeff Bodine this weekend. Yeah, I see you're very <laughs> stoked about that, too. That's <laughs> I'm happy for you, man. I almost got a chance to meet him in the early 2000s. Yep. I met his car. Oh. The, not the show car, but the actual race car. Uh, uh -huh. the, when I worked at Petty, as a, either 99 or 2000, they were testing. And uh, it was like they had a test day. We had an on-track day. And then he had another test day. Mm -hmm. So his cars were still in the garage they hadn't loaded up and we, we kind of walked over there cause we were sharing garage space and we walked over there and, you know, gave that car the once over and it was a lot softer setup than our cars. We found that. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Huh? He just preferred so, it that way. I think that was the, so for like a net, like the petty cars were set up a lot tighter than an actual race car because you want to put somebody in the car and you don't want them to mash the gas and spin out. Right. So you put them out there, you go out there, and that you want them to put that input into the steering wheel. Sure. The cup cars, they're set up. You don't have to put as much input into the car. Right. It's going to right. flow around the track better. Right. 
and um, and the driver's used to that. Yeah, obviously. the drivers are prepared for that. Like yeah, it was, yeah. So when when we when I worked there, there was a time when uh they were doing a Coca Cola racing family, and they were going to do a a lap for NASCAR. Bobby Labonte was in the car, and he's like, "Y'all don't say anything on the radio. ESPN's recording." Uh, they're going to do a lap for NASCAR. I'm like, cool. Oh, yeah. So we're sitting there listening to it. It took him two laps to do it because the first time he goes hauling off into turn one. <laughs> and he's like, so you're going to go into turn one? He goes, dang, this car's tight. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to do that again. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a lot tighter than what they're used to. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's but, hilarious. So did you get to meet Bobby Labonte then? That day? Yeah. Yeah, we met That's the whole awesome. Coca-Cola racing family, Earnhardt and all of them. What? Uh, the, that was pretty cool. Um, also got to hang out with uh, Ron Hornaday because I was doing tires that night. So I was just, we had put new tires on everything because we didn't want to have any problems. Right. So I'm just there in case some, a tire goes flat on pit road. Yeah. So I'm standing down there by the tire trailer and I look over my shoulder. I'm like, I know that guy. And, uh, you know, oh my so I go over and start talking to him and it's Ron Hornaday. And, uh, we talked for a little while and it was a good time. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. I bet that, uh, Richard Petty driving experience was a cool job to have. I bet yeah, that was a I, really cool job. I met a basketball player. Do you remember who? Yeah. I'll have to look it up. So, um, Brad, <laughs> Brad. 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 Is it Doherty? I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I am a basketball fan, but only so much. Dor. How do you spell? Dor. Dude, I don't even know who that is. Basketball. Not baseball, dummy. Basketball. <laughs> player here we go brad almost there take him a dude prepare yeah, yourself brad Dor brad okay all right folks <laughs> <laughs> it was a basketball player brad doherty uh okay. he actually big nascar fan yeah ended up uh buying a nascar team oh how about that but he was still in his playing career when I met him. I didn't know who he was. They told me a basketball player was coming that day. And uh, I think I, that day I was working on, like, strapping people in cars and all. Get, help, get them out of the car. I'll, I'll, I'm like, <laughs> you know. And, uh, yeah, what are you going to do I, with I that said, guy? How do you said, strap him in? I said, man, you ought to play basketball. He goes, I play a little. <laughs> I play a little. And they're like, Chuck, you know that was so I was like, oh, I didn't. I, no clue. You just told an, an NBA player that yeah, he's, like, dude, that he might want to try that. basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a a very good NBA player. Yeah. Not like yeah. a run of the mill, but just a very good NBA player. So, yeah, that was my interaction. Like, I'm a racer, dude. I don't know basketball. I, do I don't even know who Brad Doherty is. I've never heard that name in my life. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you're telling him you should try. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. We'll have to clip that. Yeah, that's a good do one, man. Do your magic. I will. Make it I will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chop cha, it cha, up. Cha. But, uh. <laughs> Man, we ain't even talked about the race, and we're what twenty five minutes in. Yeah, it's so, all good, man. You went to. I want to talk about that Legends race first. You went to that Legends okay. race. Um, how was that? How exciting was that compared to a NASCAR race? Like, uh, I know there's a huge difference in cars, obviously. Um, but what what did you think of the of the races? Okay, dude. So, just to put it in perspective. If there's two leaves following out here in the yard, 
Yeah. I'm going to watch that race to see which one hits first. <laughs> so you don't care what it is. I like racing. Yeah. <laughs> I like like bobsled racing in the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Speed, speed skating. You know, I like racing. I like What's the, that um, shuffleboard on ice that they do? Oh, What's that called? Curling. 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 Do you enjoy curling? It's kind of I racing. Do. I do enjoy cur- curling. That is a very fun sport. I would love to. I would love to do it. You'd probably be there, a good curler. There's a place in Atlanta you can do it. Really? They have lanes. Yeah. You'd make a good curler, dude. I if, think if, I'm built, you, I'm if built I've built ever built. seen a good curler, you are one. Get that broom. Good. I can see it now. I can see the little shuffle as you go down. Like your your. Shoulders and your hips like work in conjunction to just work down that lane all in yeah. one. Like, yeah, yeah, and you're just, think, yeah, yeah. I think I could do it. The, lane. I but the like legend, the, the legend race was so they've got two classes in legend racing, or two different types of cars. They got the legends cars and they got the bandoleros. So, bandoleros run a, tw- a twin cylinder mm-hmm. Riggs and Stratton engine. I think it okay. starts out around 20 horsepower. Uh huh. Um, I don't know what they're racing them at horsepower wise. Right. But it, it imagine your lawnmower motor on your big ride lawnmower, but it stood up like this. Right. Um they we, when we got there, they were running, and I tell you what, that them jokers were going after it. They had a good race going. <laughs> yeah. Um they they were getting after it. Uh the next class was the the younger kids and bandoleros, they were getting after it. Um, yeah, I mean, it was exciting to me. Uh, a lot of bumping, got, a lot of racing. A lot, a lot of bumping, a lot of racing. Uh, just watching watching which cars are not handling good, which ones are handling good, seeing who's going to come to the front. Sure. Uh, watching people take each other out. I don't want to get too detailed into that because it could have possibly been some speed you – Right, enter speed you rivalry or close Ooh. to it. Ooh, yeah, there were some things said after the race. Um, yeah, we don't need to fan the flames. Yeah, uh, but man, it was just it's just fun and it was free. Yeah, was free I feel to like sit in the stands and watch. I feel like that that type of legends racing would be really fun to watch because those kids, those drivers are hungry, you know, what I mean? yeah. and they're not. They're not as worried about sponsorships. They're not as worried about, oh, I can't bump this guy. I can't, I can't try to beat this guy. I can't wreck this race. I might lose everything. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like, here's the thing, but race weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway, when the Legends cars race, mm-hmm. there's a switch that flips in their head. And they're like, we're in front of everybody. We're oh. going to get our ride. We're going uh, to get our big sponsorship. They're going to see us. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Dude, it gets aggressive. They get after it. It gets very aggressive. Charlie had a chance to run one. <laughs> uh, really? He, he calls me up. He's like, Dad, uh, Krista's got a concussion, and I have talked her dad into letting me race her car. And I'm like, uh, no, you have it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go out there and tear up Krista's car on race weekend. Right, right. In a car so, he's never been in. In a car that he hasn't driven. I mean, he's driven driven a Legends in the parking lot to take it into the shop. So, I mean, he knows how to shift it. He knows how to mash the gas pedal. But, dude, I'm not putting him out there with no practice. That ain't racing. <laughs> no, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so we, we got over that. And he's like, okay. And, uh. Well, you I don't want to set your kid up for failure either. Like, yeah, I'm not no, saying he would failure. bomb in that situation, but in, in that situation, you're setting him up for failure if you let yeah. him do that. I mean, <laughs> there's one car he would have beat, definitely. I know he would have beat this one car because I was watching it run, and I know Charlie's faster than him. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I get there Sunday, and I'm talking to Chris's dad, and he's, he's like, Charlie had me convinced to run the car, but you wouldn't let him. (laughs) How did that Joker convince that man to let him run the car? 
I don't know how Charlie does half the stuff he does. <laughs> Good point. Good he point. Goes, and I told him, I told him why. And he goes, dude, I feel the exact same way. Like, he goes, I didn't even think about that. Like, cause my thing was Charlie takes, it goes out there, runs Chris's car, destroys Chris's car. Yep. And then we're spending the next part of our racing budget fixing Chris's car <laughs> instead of fixing our car. Right. You know, right. So. Yeah. That's probably not even a thought in Charlie's mind. He's just thinking about racing. No, he's like, I want to go fast. Yeah. He yeah. Go fast. I want to go yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah. There's Charlie. <laughs> but they, they had to do pictures. Uh, they had to do like, they're doing some headshots for the webpage and all that. So they had to take the driver's suit. Out. I said, well, look, I said, next time that happens, you got to go. I don't know what to do with my hands. He goes, oh, I did. I was like, you did? He goes, yeah, I did. I kept going. I felt like I was on my hands. (laughs) (laughs) So, so yeah, they, I think he, I think what he does, I think he goes in there and woos people with some comedy. Yeah. And, um, goes from there. I don't know. 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 Huh. He doesn't. I <laughs> ran into a, a guy I had not seen in forever. His name's uh, John Dewberry. He's a pastor. Okay. And uh, he's got, there's a little building that State Patrol uses during week, race weekend mm-hmm. that uh, sits empty all year. So they he commandeered it and used it for a church. They've been there about 20 years now. Nice. And, uh, I ran it. I, I seen him. He come walking up to the tent, and I'm like, I'm like, I know you. He goes, No, you don't. I said, when he said that, I said, Yeah, I do. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, What do you do? He goes, Man, I don't do nothing. <laughs> I said, You're a preacher, and you got that little building down there. You know, that's your church. He goes, Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I got to see, he goes, how come you don't come to the Bible study at racetrack no more? And I'm like, dude, I work at night. I said, when y'all are having that Bible study, I am sound asleep. I know that's right. Because they're they're done. He's like, dude, we're done by 8.50. I'm like, yeah, that ain't happening. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not in this life. Uh, so anyway, I got to talk to him. That was great running into him. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Talked to him for a little while. He he's a he's a funny funny dude, real good preacher. Uh, he's got that, you know. Black preachers seem happy sometimes, very happy. Yeah, all you the ever time. Notice this, like yeah, like they're just full of some. You know, they're full of the spirit. That's but what it is, exactly. Like like you see some some white pastors and they're just stressed out. Yes, yes. And they're like no. Some of them don't have like they'll have they can have some good jokes in the cool pit, but yeah. some of them, man, you try to cut up with them outside of it, they're like, Yeah, they don't know dude, how this dude's on it, he's quick. And I yeah. got to tell him, I said, Man, I got a podcast now. I said, I, I said, and he asked me if I talked to so and so. I said, Man, I, I, you know, I kind of keep to myself. I don't, he's like, Whatever. I said, I, I got a podcast, I can get on there and talk. I said, yeah, I'll put it this way. I had a minute of stand up I was trying to come up with the other day. And when I went to tell my podcast partner about it, it was gone. (laughs) And it's never been back. (laughs) And I don't know where it went. (laughs) And I was sitting there last night at home watching TV and it come back for a split second and then it was gone again. Oh. I didn't even have a chance to write it down, like the even oh. the topic. Dude, those that feeling sucks so bad. When you right. remember something you've been trying to remember for so long, and then it just it comes in. goes away. You just you just watch it float away. And yeah, you're like your hands are like I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, I'm back to being an idiot. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just normal idiot Chuck. Yeah, I hate that feeling, dude. Oh, oh man, I understand, Chuck. So hopefully it's going to come back, and I'll have a chance to type it. 
Yeah. We've talked about be, it. You know, that would be great. I hope you can. But the race was excellent. Our seats were great. Yeah. Talk about uh, Sunday. Sunday's race seemed Sunday's, like a pretty big deal. So normally in Atlanta before their, the last repave, it was a gas mileage and tire wear race. So they would okay. all get spread out and you're just sitting there just green flag pit stops, not a lot of wrecks. Yeah. Um, now that they've gotten the track changed and they've got this new car, it races in a pack like Daytona. And the cars are just, they're together the whole time. There's, there's passing going on, but there's nobody just getting this huge lead. Mm -hmm. And it, it raced like that all week. Uh, Joey Logano got in trouble for having the illegal glove. Oh, get out of here. Yes. He what was taken, illegal about his glove? He took his left side glove and he put webs between the fingers. Okay. So it's, okay. it's solid between the fingers. Mm -hmm. Now you can take that glove and you can put it up against the window net on the driver's side and you can change the air coming across the car. You can block air from coming in the car and you can make the car faster by doing that. Is that what he was doing? Uh, That's about all he could be doing because nobody else got caught with an illegal glove with wet <laughs> fingers. Dude, you're joking. No, they, they've got video of it. Of him with his hand up there? Yeah. Webbing yeah, the freaking air? Yeah. <laughs> you freaking racers will do anything, dude. I love it. This is the best, <laughs> it's one of the best parts of the sport. Like NASCAR has gotten this new car to where there's so limited ways to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> so he finds a glove and he's like, I can put my hand up here with this glove and I can stop. I can change the wind. That's so crazy. <laughs> and, and the reason they called him was because they got these new in-car cameras that uh -huh. face the driver. So you can see driver expressions and uh -huh. you can see that glove. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll probably be a fine or a penalty coming out for that season. Did they pull him out of the race? They made him go to the back of the field and they made him change gloves, do, obviously. I'm, I guess they made him change gloves. I would assume they made him change gloves. And he had to do yeah. a pass through penalty on the first lap. Okay. So it really, it really made him behind the eight ball all day, but he did get up there and lead some laps eventually until he wrecked. But I wonder if there's going to be a fine or a, I don't know if this is going to end up being a new rule or if there's going to be a big penalty come out Tuesday, because I mean, that's, that's some real gray area stuff right now. The, mean, right now they've got him. I think the ruling was altering and, FSI piece of safety equipment. That does seem a little far fetched, but man, he, he can't do that, right? Like, I mean, you're not supposed to alter the safety equipment. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I've never been a big Joey Legato fan, but I freaking love this. You, I, love, I love the idea of it. Yes. That. It just goes to show that these guys never quit thinking. We never quit. I don't want to say too much, but <laughs> we never quit thinking about things and ways sure. to tweak things and ways sure. to get around a certain situation. So to Joey Logano's defense, is there a rule saying you can't have a webbed glove? I don't think there's a rule that says you can't have a webbed glove, but there is a rule that says you can't alter safety equipment and a glove is considered a safety equipment so well i don't know i don't know how it's gonna go uh, the race it ended our, dude did you see the pictures of our seats go ahead and throw i'm gonna give you another throw that picture that mary beth posted uh <laughs> with the sunset i will i will right that's there. a beautiful picture and then uh, i'll follow it up uh or i'll also put up your seat picture there too yeah. as well to show yeah what kind of seats you guys got, man? Those are awesome. 
we get up there and we're up there. I'm talking about we are high. Yeah. In the stands, the seats, the spacing is wider up there. These are the the not the more expensive seats. We're under the suites, and about halfway through the race, I look up and I'm like, they've got heaters up there. What? Like those long, like shop heaters, the long round. Yeah, ones. little tubes. Yeah. They've got yeah. them up there above. So if it's a cold day, you're heated. You have heated seats. Oh, man, that's nice. We had the little tray in front of us to hold our stuff. You probably needed it once the sun went down, huh? No, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't oh, bad okay. at all. Uh, but we had a little table tray in front of us to hold our drinks and whatever. You'll see that in that picture that John just posted. Uh, I looked. I, Ray was sitting on the other side of mom and dad, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Ray, we cannot sit with the peasants anymore. We have to sit up here now. This is our <laughs> new place." <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I mean. I- the seats looked perfect with that overhang and everything. I mean, um, you're not getting battered by the elements right there. No, the only thing that was weird, I've never worn earplugs for a race before till today, yesterday. Why? Um, because I prefer to lose my hearing like a man. <laughs> um, I just haven't. I've always been like, I don't need earplugs. You know how you are when you're young. Yeah, I don't need yeah. no earplugs. I don't need this safety stuff. Right. I, I took a big bag of earplugs that Charlie had, and uh, I gave them to Dad, gave them to Mary Beth, you know, gave them to Mom, gave some to Ray. Uh, so we're sitting up there, and I'm like, man, this is a – like, the first the first stage of the race had a lot of cautions in it. So mm-hmm. it wasn't too bad. About the second stage of the race, uh, I noticed this this rattle – noise that the stands had as the roar of the cars like it was just ringing in my ear mm. especially my right ear so i'm like i'm gonna put his earplugs in dude it was weird because i went from just hearing the race cars and the ringing of the stands to being able to hear the race cars on the track i could actually hear a little bit of the announcer yeah because it t- filtered out a lot of the noise yeah i was like this is great I'm yeah, wearing earplugs now. I'm part of that crew. <laughs> yeah, every race. I, I mean, not Sonoma. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> Let's I'm not usually, get crazy here. I'm usually the guy looking around, going, "Why is that guy wearing earplugs in the race?" <laughs> I, I mean, know that's come right. on, dude. <laughs> now I'm like, why am I not wearing earplugs in the race? So, Chuck's an earplug yeah. guy now. I'm an earplug guy now. I'm I've grown up. I've matured. Yeah. I've matured. It's part Dude, of you want to jump into an ad break real quick, man? Let's do it. Okay. This has been a great show so far. I've really been enjoying this. <laughs> That's a terrifying experience. I hate that. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, we're back. So yeah. Um, that's- to get the race and recap over with the end yep. of the race, go look at it on YouTube. There's a Fox sports, I think, or NASCAR one has a uh, extended highlights of the race. Go yep. watch it. Watch the three wide finish. Daniel Suarez, 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 Suarez. Yeah. He won the race. Um, yep. Bye. Uh, good. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Much. I mean, it, it to, to have the three wide finish, I mean, I, I try. I, I just kind of spoil a little bit, but oh, to have that kind of a finish um, is wild, dude. And for yeah. you to see it in person was probably spectacular. Yeah, I told Mary Beth, I said, "This is your first NASCAR NASCAR Cup race." Yeah, and you get to see this. Yeah, the, one of the greatest finishes in NASCAR history. Sure. Yeah. And. And when it, you know this will be this that end will be in highlight reels for years, for sure, man. Kyle Busch making that push at the end, trying. I yeah, love trying. it. Dude. I was, I was like, come on, Kyle, come on, Kyle. But I like I Daniel Suarez too. So Suarez, he's a Volkswagen yeah. guy. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah he he tells a story about when he moved to the states. Um, his personal vehicle was an old bug. 
so him and his dad pulled the engine out, rebuilt the engine, and he come on. Yeah, so that's he, awesome. He made yeah. he made the jump to the states in the old bug. Oh, that's so cool, dude. That's so yeah. cool. Well, it was an awesome finish, man. Uh, and you're expecting a 500 mile race the whole time, and it winds up being 300 miles. 400 is about mile 300. I was looking at the scoreboard, going, "Why are the lap count so short?" <laughs> and then I looked down at the infield, and it's like the Amcare, Am Health, whatever it is, 400. And I was like, "This is a 400 mile race." <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, shorter than you thought. Yeah. Which. <laughs> You know that, and see that had my pit strategy, strategy, strat, strategy, all messed up. Because I'm like, we're in the second stage or third stage. It's a 500 yep. mile race. How come these guys hadn't pitted yet? Because these guys should have pitted to make it through to the end, right? And and that would have broke up the field a little bit. And then that's when I realized that it was a 400 mile race. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all good. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Awesome seats. Awesome race. I mean, Mary Beth's first NASCAR race was a good one. It was a good one. She's spoiled now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Uh, awesome so, race weekend for sure. Uh, uh, Charlie got to drive his GTI around Atlanta Motor Speedway Thursday after oh. they did a charity ride around the track thing. Yeah. And, uh, Apparently, a rumor is that he hit 120 miles an hour because a guy in the Corvette told him he couldn't keep up. Ooh. So the lap car, the the pace car, the Corvette car. No, the Corvette was uh, the pace car was on around, and they were both holding back so they could get a run going. Uh huh. And uh, Charlie kept up with him. With the Corvette. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so we might have to sell that car. I don't know. Good. Night. I'm glad yeah. he's got his, his old truck that he can drive for a little while. <laughs> right, right. He can put around in that old thing. Because <laughs> that boy ain't right. <laughs> um, at least he was on the racetrack and not on the street. That's know? hilarious. And Mary Beth was in the car for this, which makes yeah, it even I'm like, better. I'm like, could one of y'all been an adult in this situation? <laughs> Nah, man. Jeez. Nah, 120 miles an hour. Boom. 120 miles an hour. Now, you were and telling I, me something interesting. Because of the pitch of the track, you've got to go at least 70. Yeah, at least 70 or you'll kind of come down the track as you're going around. Right, um, right. I rode a motorcycle around at one time. Mm -hmm. And I had to lean. So I'm turning left, but I had to lean to the right the whole time to stay up on the bank and Wow. And to the point that my right side tailpipe was dragging at some points. How fast were you going, though? About 70. Okay. Okay. So the bike needed to really be going a little bit faster. How does it feel when you're going? Does it feel like you're going 70 on a track like that? No. No, it feels very slow. Really? Because wh why? Because of the pitch and because of everything? Because like, of the, the banking, because of, you really, at 70, you don't feel the G-forces from the banking. Mm. Uh, you come out of that, like, turn two, and you look down the back straightaway, and it's like, okay, is it ever going to get here? But at 160 or faster, it, yeah. it clicks on pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's really fascinating, man. I've never had the opportunity to race on a track like that or to run wide open on a track like that. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I like it. I yeah. like race cars. Well, dude, um, uh, we went back to the moon this past week. I don't know if you saw this. Did we you did? see? That? Yeah, we sent a lander to the moon. I missed all that. Yeah, uh, big exciting news in NASA this past week. We finally have sent another mission to the moon. It was just a lander. Uh, they were, I don't even remember what kind of experiments they were going to do or testing or whatever. Um, however, the lander fell over. Um, so, like, imagine an, a humongous R2-D2 looking thing. Yeah. He fell right over onto his side. And um, now he's pretty much useless. Okay. What do you want to bet that 
in a few months, we get a news article that says Lander has somehow uprighted itself mm. and has continued to uh, transmit information. Now, that would be interesting. I mean, th they can get like video feed from it. That's how they know it's sideways. <laughs> no, they ain't going to show us the video feed of it getting knocked picked back up that's not gonna happen well what i find interesting and this is actually um there's some really cool information out there on this i started to do a little deep dive but i didn't have enough time um there's some really cool information out there on this about this is exactly why the apollo mission had to switch to manned landing to a to a piloted landing um oh, really? rather than yeah rather than an automated landing system um, they had to do a piloted uh, landing because of this exact situation. So the lander was only coming, it, it was only coming down at about two miles an hour. That's so super slow. But one thing the lander can't always predict is a boulder. So a boulder at two miles an hour is going to tip that thing over. Um, Wait a minute, John. Wait. <laughs> You're telling me that there are cameras in commercial vehicles that can tell you that you ain't got your seatbelt on. Yeah. But we can't put a camera on the bottom of that lander that says there's a boulder move over. My guess is, my guess is they had cameras on there, but they underestimated it. Something I'm sure something went wrong. I don't know. That's what they're, and that's only their best guess as to what happened. Um, it caught a boulder, a foot, of the lander caught a boulder on the way down during the landing process and knocked it over. So, so this lander sitting on the side like this. That's right. So That's right. It's just laying over on its side. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. So what are yeah. they going to do when they're sitting there monitoring? Cause you know, there's some, even though it's broke till it quits working, there's somebody has yep. got to sit there and monitor the, the, <laughs> the transmission, right? The feed. Yeah. The yeah. Feed. So what are they going to do when some feet walk up to it? <laughs> just like pick and it up and like you're just like sitting there and there's just two feet, and then there's you know four feet, <laughs> and then there's six feet, <laughs> and then there's a, a face that's like, yeah, <laughs> and then they kick it and walk off. Yeah. Do they do they tap on the tap on yeah, the Yeah, they, uh, they they tap oh. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Just walk off. It's and, the space lizards, man. And as they walk off, you realize that it's the Nazis on the moon. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can they be reptilian Nazis? Can they have big uh, lizard tails? <laughs> reptilian Nazis are on the moon, John. That's what you gotta understand. <laughs> the frogs, <laughs> the, the frogs. They got the frogs with them. <laughs> oh man, just the um. It's a terrible to think about being one of those NASA engineers that has dedicated literal years of work <laughs> to this, like blood, sweat, everything you've got. You've been through complete mental exhaustion preparing for this mission. For it to just tip over. Well, for them, it's great. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because it's job security. Now they've got to send something else now up they there. Get to make another one and send it <laughs> back up there and get to spend billions of dollars on it. You know, this dude was moments away from getting laid off. <laughs> and now the whole team gets to come back. It's like, we're getting the band back together. Now. Yeah, now we they're gotta like, go. we got to do, we got to build another one. We can build this one better. NASA's like, crap, we got to fix this, man. This is the only team we have that can get us back. That guy's back there going. <laughs> You're right. He's fired one minute and then the next minute he's hired for, for a mission to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. He's over there smoking a cigarette. And it's like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's watching the feed. He's halfway through his a bottle. And he goes, oh, yes. We are back. We are back. Brody, get it back together, man. We own it. We own it. What do you mean? We, we are back together, dude. We got to build uh, up. Or. With an arm so it can push itself back up. 
<laughs> Do you think this is some like black budget, like no bid contract type stuff like we saw in Afghanistan, right? Where like the head of this mission is best buddies with the jet engine maker or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so they got to make another one. So they have to make a whole nother thing. Like they got to the redesign fuel. the whole thing. Yeah. Hey, hey, we need we got to reach back out to this company. This was yeah. their fault. They've got to redesign this thing. We've got to pay them all this millions of dollars again. I mean, it could be. It could be. Do you think we actually went this time? I think we went the first time. Good. Me too. I don't have I don't have sufficient enough evidence other than the hey, trust me, bro. We didn't go. Yeah. You yeah. Know, well, say that we didn't go. I think NASA NASA really screwed up by releasing like promotional pictures that were actually set photos. Yeah. Right. Like they were promoting the the mission to space and the mission to the moon. They were doing all that after the fact and and kind of promoting it during by taking set photos where it yeah. looked like men in space. And was, they really was, screwed up by kind of playing that as real footage. Was there was there a set with a move a movie set with a lunar landing on it? Yes. Yeah. Did we make it to the moon? Yes. Yeah. I think both are true. I think I think I think we couldn't get sufficient footage, of, like real good footage, on the moon, and they were like, "Crap, this looks awful. No one's gonna have like you, it." Have you ever watched a TV show? And they're playing the clips on the the, the coming on mm -hmm. during the music video of the coming on, but those clips never occur in the TV show. Yes. A perfect yes. example is uh, Miami Vice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But those clips are part of Miami Vice. Yes. Those clips were filmed with Miami Vice. Yes. But they were not part of the show. Yeah. Walker, Texas Ranger, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, All the clips for the intro, not actually in the show. Right. Yeah. But they were part yeah. of the show. Right. I they agree. Were, they were of that brand of Walker, yeah. Texas Ranger or my advice. Yeah. I think we're, I think especially in 1969 and still today, science is really bad at communicating with the public. Well, have you ever met a scientist? Yes, <laughs> okay. I have. It's super I've awkward people. I've met engineers before and they mm -hmm. are very hard to communicate with. Yes. Now you take yeah. a scientist this yeah. next that's that's engineer plus one right right that's like an even more of a hint of the tism right and and that's what sets neil degrasse tyson apart um yes, that's because that's what makes yeah. him so awesome is he's able to talk to you and able to help you understand in a much better way than any he, other science he can talk to you in a way in a way he can use layman's terms exactly exactly you know like he is like if if I'm probably going to mess this up, but if like the earth was the size of a baseball, mm -hmm. the moon would be like a, the size of a pin, top of a pin. Something like that. Across yeah. the room or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wild. It, he, he's got some really cool comparisons. Um, yeah, and he really, he really helps you understand the magnitude of the earth and then the magnitude of space, the vastness. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it, it helped that they landed Friday. Because the moon was really close. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I didn't. Yeah, the moon was really close Friday. Oh. Okay. Saturday, not so much, but Friday, it was pretty close. Yeah, you think it was closer than that 250,000, yeah. that quarter million? <laughs> <laughs> How much closer than that quarter million do you think it was? Uh, you know, it probably not off a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, no way. yeah. That would be, yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. thousand is what it is. A couple thousand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, when we, let's, when we oh, see ahead. the moon, when we see yeah. the moon closer, is it actually closer or is it perspective? No, we've been over this, I think, before on the podcast. It is all perspective. Um, okay. And there's actually a way to get rid of it. Um, it's really fascinating. If you can go, if you can get out far enough into like a field with a good, decent uh, view of the moon, yeah. if you look down between your legs at the moon, it all of a sudden looks normal size again. 
it's a it's a perspective. It's a it's a trick your your eyes are playing on you. You have to do it naked though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, there's two moons looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I just got um. I, I just got a thought moon, of Braveheart. The moon sees me. <laughs> Did you know that scene in Braveheart? <laughs> uh, right before yeah, that, we... all flip their kilts up. <laughs> Can you imagine just a whole bunch of scientists out there like, shit? <laughs> look, I told you. We, we figured it out, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know it was the Greeks that probably figured that out, and they are into some freaky stuff. Yeah, the Greeks didn't wear clothes. <laughs> I'm, I'm about convinced of that yeah the toga that's a that's a myth <laughs> yeah the toga. well i mean the toga you know just because they were a little chilly that day mm, mm -hmm. but the yeah, rest of the time breeze. they're just free roman dude the toga was for virgins <laughs> oh really i don't know okay. <laughs> mm. let's just let's just make that up um, you got a conspiracy corner for me this week, man. What are we what are we working with? Okay, so it's a theory. Okay. Um, I I'll let you decide if it's a conspiracy or just a theory. All right, I'm I'm into it. Let me hear it. At Atlanta Motor Speedway, off of turn one, there's a cemetery. And Beside the cemetery used to set a church. Okay. Now, the racetrack bought the property of the church. They left the cemetery. There's actually a family owns that little acre or so where the cemetery is at. Mm -hmm. There's still people being buried fresh in there. It dates really? back to the 1830s, and there's still some pretty fresh sites in there. Um, it is said that when they tore down the church they recycled the wood to build some of the uh, some of the concrete forms mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the track that makes sense the track was plagued and has always been plagued with a lot of rain outs mm -hmm. uh, there's been some crazy deaths at the track mm -hmm. crew members and all but the theory is the reason the weather is always not conducive to good racing is because God was mad at the church, at them for tearing down the church. Ah, uh, okay. I like this theory. I like that. It is. It is a conspiracy theory. I call that. A, I call that a conspiracy. You call that a conspiracy theory? theory? Okay. Yeah, I've got a question. Is the graveyard like the the cemetery? Is that inside the fences? No, it's outside of Term 1. It's outside so, of Term 1. Like, if you look at it on Google Maps. Yeah, it sits um, outside of the stands, just outside of the stands and all that. Just outside the stands. You can one. see it in Term 1. If you're in the stands high enough and down that way, you can see the cemetery. You, you can look out and see it. Yes. Now, I've heard this theory before, and I, I wanted to – I looked it up so I could – um so I could get it right. Yeah. But yeah. Well, so that's, I think that's if we it. look at some of the elements, right? Like if we look at the plausibility of this conspiracy theory, do I think they would use some of the wood from the old church to, as molds, as concrete molds? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Because they're totally building this place on a budget. budget. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Every dollar they can save. Yeah. And we all so know that, that, that uh, that type of wood is throwaway wood, right? Yeah, um, I just sent you a screenshot. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, so you whatever you build a, a concrete mold with, you're going to throw that wood away. So yeah, right. I can see oh. recycling the wood. And after they made the molds, they took the wood and burned it. So they technically they burned the church. Mmm. Mmm. Huh. I kind of like that conspiracy theory, man. I kind of like it. Do you think do you think that God is pissed off at Atlanta Motor Speedway? I don't know, man, because 
I mean, they tell us the church is just a building. Right. You know, so. Right. I don't know, but it it is kind of odd that over the years, I've probably been to as many ra- more races that have had rain issues than not. Wow. Wow. 50%. You think it's about 50-50? About 50-50. Probably more. Probably 60-40. Wow. More and, rain issues than not. And when you look at their traditional race date of like around the odds of March, around the 15th, mm-hmm. right there, um, you can almost predict that it's going to be raining around here that weekend. Hmm. Like even last year, I'm like, why is it raining? It was nice last week. It was nice this week. <laughs> Next week. Oh, it was the, the traditional race weekend. Yeah, it was race weekend. It had to, it had to rain. Yeah. It was, um, um, I mean, it was to the point where they've had to move the rate. They've, they've moved the race dates trying to get better, better weekends and the rain followed them. Jeez. Jeez. I, I, I can buy it, dude. I can buy it. I like this conspiracy. I like it. Yeah. Um, so there's a family that owns the cemetery now. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, owns the and I'm looking at the 45 day forecast. The sixteenth mm-hmm. and seventeenth, which would have been regular race weekend. Yep. Back before they changed the schedule around. Rain on Saturday, thunderstorms on Sunday. See? There's something about it, man. I, I kind of like it. I like it. Okay. I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, that's would, a good one. I was a little worried think. about it. I, I don't think it's uh I don't think God is pissed off at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But um, is there some sort of woo-woo attached to burning the church and all that? Maybe. Possibly. 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 Um, I do talk about objects having memory, and and I talk about uh, some sort of of consciousness in in objects. So, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. um, And there's been some deaths that were there. There's been deaths in that turn mm. like unexplained type deaths or like just, just some bad wrecks in turn which is turn mm-hmm. one now it used to be turn three when the track was first built but there has been some bad wrecks in that area i believe that's where steve park had his wreck and got brain damaged mm. Mm. so yeah that's rough dude that's rough Tell great conspiracy you. corner i like that yeah, Talladega, we might have to talk about some of the stuff going around there. Uh, we can do that. Come Talladega, you'll like we can. It. You'll like it. It has to do with Native Americans. Oh, yes, I will like that. I, I think I might be a little familiar with that conspiracy, but we'll revisit it. Yeah. Sure, come come Talladega weekend. We'll definitely talk about that. How about a meme, man? Do you got a meme for me this week? I got a meme for you. This is just a Chuck, Chuck-oriented Chuck show over here. You know, it happens like that sometimes. <laughs> and this one, I mean, we're we're keeping it. We're keeping it in the family, in the racing family of memes this week. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> Here we go. I'm pulling it up now. All right. <laughs> Here we go. We got a Cars 3 wide finish with Lightning McQueen right in the middle, sticking his tongue out uh, <laughs> to, get, to, get, to get the checker flag. I love it, dude. I love it. Three wide finish, just like we had at Atlanta this weekend. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, cars, dude, that, that was a movie that my kids wore out. Yeah, I that so cars, the first cars mm-hmm. was me and Mary Best first date. Really? You went to the movies to see cars? Yes. That's awesome. What a cool first date. Yeah, I'm like, I'd really like to see that movie Cars, but I don't have kids. Yeah. And she's like, Well, you don't have to have kids to go see it. We'll go watch it. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <We watched it. laughs> that's awesome man that's awesome yeah. well hey i'll um i'll put that up on the screen for the listeners right to there. enjoy yep right there right. everybody needs to check out our buddy uh chef drew he's got the eating chambers channel on youtube we got to do our shout outs this week yep. check him out on youtube the eating chambers channel um, anybody right. else we need to shout out? I'm proud of Charlie. Shout out to Speed U um, for giving Charlie these opportunities, yeah. letting him spend the weekend up there at the racetrack. Chip and yeah, all the guys there on the team. Thank you for the uh, 
for the tickets. We really enjoyed it. And, uh, hey, do you want to, when we talk about, I know this is kind of some bookkeeping stuff or, or behind the scenes. When we uh, talk about the uh, race car track, would you like to put a picture up there of that? Of Charlie's yes, I car? would. All yes, right. I would. You got a picture of it at the track? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect, I'll send man. It to you. Thanks, I'll man. Send it to you. All it's right. been a great show. Episode 133 in the books, Chucker. All right. We'll holler at y'all. See you, Night Shifters. <laughs>